Hello everybody, welcome to our Species Spotlight on Autosynclus. I uh, hope you enjoyed your holidays. Now it's time to have a look at this interesting dwarf sucker mouth catfish. They are, the Autosynclus is typically distributed throughout South America, east of the Andes, from northern Venezuela to northern Argentina. It's a fish that is typically found in smaller to mid-sized rivers and streams. There are approximately 19 different species of Autosynclus at this point. Uh, now, their tip, the type of structure that they're found on in, uh, in the wild is typically branches, uh, rocks, stones, uh, bottom of streams and so forth. And they're actively feeding on algae, detritus and plant leaves as well. Um, so we're going to cover the species spotlight by the same way that we do typically all of our other ones. We just went through a bit of the origins with you. Now we're going to have a look at the behavior tanks, uh, community tank compatibility, color size of the fish and so forth, the comportment. Then we'll go a little bit into the water conditions, uh, feeding habits or feeding of the fish, and then a quick summary. Let's get into the behavior size, comportment, coloration, and so forth. In general, Autosynclus are a very peaceful, small sucker mouth catfish. Uh, they travel about, as we mentioned, in the wild in, in groups of up to thousands of individuals. So it's important to remember that when you stock your tank, minimum group size really should be six to 10 of these fish. Minimum tank size, you could say, is about 15 to 20 gallons, uh, in which you can easily put six to 10 Autosynclus. The main challenge there will be ensuring that they're properly fed. Uh, they need to feed regularly uh, and will quickly go through whatever algae is present in your tank. So you really need to feed them a good variety of different commercial diets. We'll get, we'll get uh, into that in a bit. Um, a type of aquarium that's really best to introduce them to is something that's well established. Uh, an aquarium that contains plants, moderately lit driftwood, some stonework, uh, medium sized you know, mid kind of current level with a, with a good filter system and uh, something that's been established uh, for a while. They'll actively feed that way right away. They'll have some natural sources of algae and detritus settle right into your tank and it'll be really easy to adapt all kinds of other diets after. Uh, the ideal tank mates for these uh, fish are really you know, small peaceful species. Dwarf anabantids, smaller live bears, Tetras, a smaller, more peaceful species. Uh, pencil fish, for example, are a great tank mate. Smaller rasboras, all the quarry cats are great. Uh, they mix fine with, uh, with autosynclus. So remember that, no, you know, no faster swimming, uh, more boisterous mid-sized species, it can be problematic for autosynclus. Uh, the typical coloration for them is, uh, the base color is kind of a opaque beige to uh, a brownish coloration and they have black markings on the body. As we mentioned, 19 different species, so you, you get some variation there obviously. Uh, but that's the typical kind of look that an autosynclus has. Um, and as far as difference between the sexes, between male and female, uh, when looking at the top, you on well-conditioned individuals, you may see that females that tend to fill up with eggs get a little bit broader looking across the, the body. Uh, now let's move on to uh, water conditions. Typically, uh, these, this species requires good water quality. Uh, you want to maintain your nitrate levels below a, PP, a 20 ppm level. Uh, there should be no ammonia or nitrite present in the aquarium. Typical pH range is pretty broad for autosynclus, 6 to 7.5 is fine. If you want to go uh, with, a, with a range that's more natural to them, 6.5 to 7 would really be ideal. Uh, moderate to, you know, moderately soft to moderately hard uh, water is, is what they require. That would mean a DKH uh, of about 5 to 15 would be a good range. And as we mentioned before, uh, you know, water current should be at about a medium kind of level in the tank, not too, too strong and, uh, and not completely uh, stagnant either. You want to maintain a decent water flow. Now let's get into feeding your autosynclus. Um, newly imported species really do best, as we mentioned, being introduced into a well-established aquarium so you can, they can have access to some natural soft algae to, to start feeding on. Once they've acclimated, you can give them some fresh foods such as uh, slices of zucchini or cucumber. Lettuce leaves are also appreciated. They'll take their time and graze on that. Um, 
and of course, uh, you know, it's a more natural kind of uh, format of food for them. As far as commercial diets are concerned, any of the quality algae, uh, you know, algae-based uh, pellets, uh, granules, flake foods that you sink to the bottom of the tank, these are all things that they'll actively feed upon as well. Keep in mind, it really should be a vegetable-based diet for these fish. It's, it's, uh, it's an important thing. In summary, the Autosynclus is an excellent dwarf uh, sucker mouth catfish that makes a great community tank member for planted aquariums, tanks with smaller tetras, anabantids, rasboras. Very, very peaceful fish. Very useful member for your aquarium. Will eat a soft algae very effectively. Great for keeping your plant leaves clean. We highly recommend them. Make sure to try some out. Make sure to, to, to keep some of them in your tank, but also make sure to feed them on a regular basis. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Make sure to comment, subscribe, and like the video before. Take care. Until the next one.